Here we go, everybody. I've got a dear friend and one of the best technology partners in the country right now. Every medical group, every PE back provider group needs to know about them. If they don't already, we're very excited bringing them to our clients. Very, very, very innovative. Uh, Charlie Veen is, uh, he's, he lives in North Carolina. Don't hold that against him. I don't know, is that a Panthers fan or Falcons? Panthers, baby. NFC South okay. champs, yeah. never. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Super, Super Bowl attendance, never. Uh, so we all love mediocre football down here. He's a CRO there. Not He's not the conversion rate optimization specialist. He's ch chief revenue officer. And we also have Rich Riddick on the line. Y'all know him. He's on all these things with me. He heads up all of our media tech innovation, all that kind of fun stuff. He found Charlie. Now we're all, all good friends. And I'm very thankful for him having found Charlie in line. Charlie, what is line? Dude, line line is speech analytics technology <laughs> that automatically analyzes all the interactions your staff has with patients, tells you what the hell happened, and uh, optimizes conversion rate. You got to have it. Rich, so you're the more unbiased because we have a lot of call and lead tracking and CRM friends and all that kind of fun stuff. Why is line working really well for our clients. What does it do as well or better yeah. than, than other partners? Rich, Rich, answer the yeah. question. He's Charlie, so, you're too biased. Charlie, you're too biased. You can't answer this one, man. I gotta, I gotta, okay. give, the, uh, I gotta give the objective and the neutral perspective on this. So not to, uh, not to give Charlie a big head, obviously the big thing for us as an agency that specializes in patient acquisition is can't really do that very effectively if you can't measure patient acquisition. And so what Line gives us is the ability to understand how many new patient leads and how many new patient appointments we're driving, either via phone calls or via form submissions that then our clients then call back um, and get these guys on the phone and try and book an appointment with them, right? So instead of reporting out on calls, any any type of call or any type of form, we're now able to say, we drove this many new patient leads to you guys, and of those new patient leads that we drove to you, you converted 50% into new patient booked appointments or new consults or whatever whatever that next step is, right? Whatever that SQL event is that is pushing these people down the funnel. So that's huge for us because now we can measure ROI on our efforts. Um, our clients can feel really good about what they're getting. We can optimize, you know, we can send the right signals to the advertising platforms to optimize towards actual new patient appointments instead of just calls and, and forms that might not be qualified. And so overall, just see a, a decent performance lift from, from integrating this technology. And oftentimes we will say to our clients, we would rather you spend a little less on your media budget to carve out the dollars to, to get the tracking set up right and to get your tech stack right, because you're still gonna get more for that limited, for that lower dollar amount that you're investing in media, if you have the right measurement, than if you are not buying this technology and just guessing and just kind of not sending the right signals to the platforms and, and, and all that fun stuff. So just as important as no, and so we know we know how many leads we're driving. We know how many appointments are coming out of those leads. Very, very, very important. Everybody wants a CAC now that we're in a recession. All the private equity groups they want to know exactly how much return they're getting for the ad spend, right? So that's very important. And Charlie, just as important as knowing how many leads we're driving, we also know why some are calling and not booking, right? That's one of the cool things. I think line, uh, the intelligence there is pretty nifty, right? So we find out why people aren't booking. Yeah, every, every lead that doesn't convert is tagged with a specific reason. And so kind of going along with what Rich said, you, get, you can get more out of the leads you already have. If you identify the top one or two things, obstacles that are keeping the leads that are already reaching out from scheduling an appointment, you can attack those and then your conversion rate's gonna go up, you get more booked appointments. So the biggest shift here is with sort of, you know, traditional CRM tools or call tracking in the past, you're not optimizing for booked appointments as Rich said. And what we've done is we're using AI to show you whether people are booking or not automatically. So it changes the conversation and the strategy for marketing and lead management to optimize for booked appointments, which is really what you're trying to do anyway. Got it. And there's like, there's there's data on the agents even really, right? Like yeah. You're able to, yeah, tell us more about that. What are you able to see there? Yeah, so stat, individual staff performance. So essentially what's happening is, we'll just use inbound calls as an example. 
all the calls coming in are recorded, transcribed speech to text, and then we're analyzing the content of the dialogue. And so one of the things we can pick up on is who is handling these interactions. So let's say you have a you know contact center and there's 50 people in there. You're going to know exactly how many leads they handled, what is their conversion rate to book appointment individually, and then individually why aren't people booking when they speak to those agents, right? And so then yeah. you can get really targeted to, hey, these three people have an issue with price objection. These five people are over indexing on out of network insurance, whatever it is. And you can have more effective communication around what they need to change to right. get more folks through. I love that and figure out why John sucks. I was just saying, we have real life use cases of that, you know, with some with one of our major clients, joint clients that's using it. We, you know, we, we were able to help them track the, the improvements in performance and conversion rates by attacking some of the issues that they had where you know they had agents who were basically telling uh, people who were calling in to go back to the online scheduler and book their appointment through the online scheduler instead of booking them in that moment when they had them on the phone um, and so little things like that and that's that's a great way to move the needle in terms of the number of new patients you're driving without having to invest more dollars in marketing right getting more out of the dollars you're already spending and Rich, how does it help inform some of their messaging strategy creative? What have you noticed in line, in the platform that makes us change what we're doing on the media front? Well, there's a number of different ways that it can help, right? Like, so if you think about like the reasons not booked, another example of a client that we were, that we were working with, with line, they were getting a lot of new patient leads, but they weren't booking or getting to the next step because they had Medicaid. And so one of the things that we then did was be much more explicit both in our advertising and Lady on the landing page, page that we don't yeah. accept Medicaid, right? Because we don't want to have to pay for those folks, right? So ideally, you're sort of vetting them out early, you're filtering them out before they even get to the, to the page. But if not, you're stopping them from calling you and wasting operational time for people who can't, you know, take these leads and do anything with them. And then other things I think are helpful too. So like Line can tell you that the types of treatment that people are coming in for, so if you have a provider that offers multiple different treatment modalities, understanding the types of treatment that people are coming in for, even if the, the search terms might be a bit more generic, it helps you to say, actually, you know, people who are searching for this are really looking for appointments around this. So I'm going to focus the, the efforts of my messaging on those, on those types of appointments, right? I'm, yeah. You know, because, because I don't know, like with 70% of people who are seeking mental health, might actually be wanting psychiatry med management. I'm mm. going to put more influence on med management in my messaging because those are the people that are coming through and booking appointments. Yeah, so there's a lot of little yeah. tweaks that we can do like that. And and Charlie, y'all just had Line just came out with their benchmark report. Your benchmark report, uh, not written by Chat GPT, right? Not Chat GPT. Not Chat GPT. All right, so, it's, so it's a mediocre piece of content. <laughs> what were some of the main, uh, in that benchmark report, share some novel findings. What were the top reasons people are not booking? And some are going to be obvious and some our provider yeah. groups are like, that would have seemed obvious and I didn't know that. Yeah, the obvious one, if uh, we work in a variety of specialties, but anytime there's insurance potentially involved to some extent, out of network insurance or out of network insurance Medicaid are really common there. Um, and Rich just gave a great use case for the Medicaid on the marketing side of uh, finding ways that you make an adjustments to not drive those patients and, and pay for those leads. So those are common in, in those types of specialties right below that. And if it's a purely elective specialty, by far, the top one is caller procrastination. What does that mean? That means people call in and they ask questions. I mean, patients are, regardless of whatever the specialty is, patients are consumers now. They have a consumer mindset. What does this cost? How does this work? Uh, how much is my insurance gonna cover? Whatever. And so what happens is staff answer that question to start the call, and they do not focus on booking people. If you ask, this would actually be interesting, if you're a, uh, managing a team at a practice group or a call center, if you were to ask all of your agents or your staff exactly what their job is when they answer the phone and talk to a new patient, what they should say is help people People schedule and a lot of you probably would have zero people say that right um, so they're not thinking about what the purpose of the call is which is simple scheduling people and so then the conversation gets focused on 
all the information that wow. isn't as relevant. And then people say, well, let me call you back. Like that is rampant and, and a huge opportunity for practices to just attack that, just change the mindset of staff. Uh, and we, there's a lot of examples of people that are generating millions of dollars a year with the leads they already have by correcting that issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, about, it's about making people in healthcare approach it, it in a much more retail mindset, right? Like I think yeah. the traditional approach for patient acquisition in healthcare, because a lot of it's referral based, they're so warm that you can ask patients to jump through a lot of hoops <clears throat> to become a patient of your practice. But that's cha- I feel like that's changing now with so many more providers that are out there, so many more retail focused providers, retail mindset that if you don't start playing the game and offer amazing customer service and make it really easy, you're gonna lo- you're gonna leave a lot of patients on the table. Yeah, hire salespeople in that call center, baby, and send the crap out of them. That's what they're there to do. <laughs> yeah, not there, there to answer questions. They're there to sell appointments. What is a great new patient conversion rate from call to appointment booked? The average is uh, 62% across all specialties. So. I would say the top practices are 70 and above. And one interesting stat about individual uh, people, the top performing staff members convert over 80% and the lowest are below 20. So just think about that. Human beings doing the same job and that big of a spread and their performance is, is pretty wild. But if you're if you are converting over 70% of your overall leads, calls and forms, you're, you're doing pretty well. There's certainly okay. opportunities to improve, but that is definitely well above average. Rich, when we look at all these call tracking metrics, what do you focus our clients on? What's most important? I think the most important thing is to focus on for most for, for the majority of our clients, right? Because what they care about is new patients. Uh, there's two metrics in line. There's new patient leads. So people who are looking for that service, whether or not they're qualified, whether or not they book, and then the new patient booked appointment, right? Okay. So we are, we're not really focusing on existing patients. We're not really focusing on sort of existing patient reactivation. Um, so for us, it's really all about the, those two metrics that, that tell us what the new patient is. But, okay. you know, we're getting more, you know, I think if you're going to deploy the line or if you're focusing on new patients, like Charlie says, there's so many other reasons outside of just the marketing that you're doing that <laughs> determines whether that number goes up or down. There's so many other factors. And you as a marketing team have got to be clued into that, right? Like if the call center is dropping the ball, you got to know about it, right? If, if you're seeing the common objections come up time and time again, you've got to be tied into those reasons not booked. You've got to understand what's happening. So yeah, yeah those are the two metrics, but we look at the whole, we look at the, all the data to really see if there's any weak points and opportunities for improvement. I was going to say one other one, he, those are good there. And in terms of reasons not booked, one, one that we haven't talked about much yet is web forms. So an increasing number of patients are, you know, filling out contact forms or request appointment online in addition to online booking. And the follow-up with those web leads is so critical. Most places that I talk to or meet have a really elaborate drip nurture sequencing going on, right? Hey, somebody fills out a form, we start emailing and we text them and so forth. I believe in that. What they're not doing is calling people immediately. If you call a web lead within five minutes, you're 10 times as likely to get them on the phone and your average conversion rate goes from 19% to 55% just from calling them right away. So that that should be like, you shouldn't even worry about any other part of your web lead follow-up until you're consistently calling people that fast. And that and line does that. As soon as web lead comes yeah. in, it calls uh, call center and patient are connected. Yeah, yeah, the, the call center gets an inbound call from us that says web lead, so they know it's one. They, they pick up, they, they're prompted to press one, then we call the patient. So if a patient's on your site and fills out a web form and gets a call in 40 seconds and it says your practice name, they're going to book. Like that yeah. is Ritz Carlton, right? So that type of stuff is important. And yes, that's one of the features that people really like about Line. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm glad we touched on it because I tell everybody that. I called Line call tracking to a client. They said, well, it's like a lead tracking in CRM. So our, our clients are smarter than me. They see it differently. Charlie, why is it not just call tracking? How would you differentiate? Because it does the web flows, because it does what? How, how do you think of it? Because you integrate with call. Yeah, I, I think I have it wrong. 
Yeah, it's okay. The first thing is it's any type of lead. So if if a if a lead reaches out via an inbound call, we get that. We also integrate into the phone system. So let's say you have like a high amount of referral volume coming into your practice. Those folks are going to have your main phone number. We can get those. Um, so inbound calls, web leads, like I just mentioned, and all the follow-up to web leads. We integrate with online booking platforms uh, and chat uh, uh, features as well. So sort of omni-channel. And then here's the biggest difference is a concept that Rich loves called, called leads basis. What does that mean? That means that one human being, one lead, could connect with your practice a number of times in different ways before they book, right? But it's just one lead. So maybe maybe somebody calls in and doesn't book, and then later that night they go to your site and they book online. That's still just the same lead, right? So Line is capturing all that action and reconciling that that is the same person who ended up booking, and that's really, really important. Whereas call tracking is just counting calls essentially um, and not thinking about that concept. Yeah, that's good. I got it. So you guys are, yeah, it's chat, email forms, and yeah. calls. And you guys must start integrating with, you're integrating with online booking tools now too. That's the final, that's the fourth component, I suppose. Correct. Yeah, very cool. Where, where are you excited to take line over the next year? What are we allowed to say that Eastside Partners is not going to get mad at us about? <laughs> Uh, they never get mad. They're great, great partners for us. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah I mean, I look, I think out, outside of, you know, healthcare, the there's tons of sales enablement technology because the 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 bridge between leads and that first appointment or that next step is is a huge part of the business is a critical component. And so health non healthcare industries have it figured out and there's tons of options for them. Those tools don't work here because they require that salespeople are constantly filling out uh, lead reports and keeping up with data. And there just isn't time for the staff that are handling these, these interactions to do that. So where we're headed is we are gonna be the platform to use to optimize lead management and conversion to initial appointment. And nothing else is gonna touch us because we're using speech analytics to automate it. So the only thing that staff have to do is talk on the phone and we're just doing everything else to make sure that those are follow, followed up with. So that's like the vision. More specifically, we're adding two-way texting that's coming out. We're gonna start doing a lot of integrations to connect the data all the way to revenue and there's some other benefits. But long-term, we wanna be, it's like, if you're not using Line, like you're just way behind. Yeah, yeah, well, we tell our clients that now. Yeah, 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 so they already <laughs> yeah. are. <laughs> and it'll just exactly. get, there'll be way, way more. Rich, what else? What else uh, do you want? Do you want the wider healthcare marketing sec to know out there? You, we want to advance, and our healthcare marketing friends and listeners, all eight of them that listen to this, we want them to get better. This technology critical. You really want them to know what that we haven't covered. I don't know if there's anything that we haven't covered in respect to line that I that I would say is useful to know, other than just. You know, think about the importance of, of a deployment like this, right? Think about if, if you are focused on new patient acquisition and you are spending, you know, anywhere in even in like the low five figures on a digital marketing budget, I think line, every month and I think line is, is, is a valuable addition and, and enhancement to what you're doing, right? Because ultimately, like you said, Alex, there's, you know, where the economy is, where some of the PE firms are, they need to understand what that CAC is. The lead basis stuff that Charlie mentioned really allows you to do that right. You're deduping all of these different engagements and contact points with the client, uh, with the patient to get down to like an individual lead that you've acquired. And I just think that's so important because with this technology, in six months from now, in 12 months from now, you can stand in front of the board and you can say, this is what I've driven. This is the growth yeah. that I've driven into this platform this is the growth that I've driven into, you know, into these individual locations. And that's another thing, like we we can deploy these these line tracking numbers everywhere, right? So you get a lot of new patients through Google My Business. We've got line single trackable numbers on Google My Business and we're tracking every new patient that comes in through your GMB listing, right? We've got line numbers deployed on directories through Yext, you know, yeah. so it's everywhere, right? We're using line numbers offline in partner referrals from you know B2B to C 
partnerships. So we're really measuring every new patient and where it's coming in from. This is not just paid search. It's not just SEO. This is the absolute complete picture <coughs> of every marketing effort that your team is doing yeah. to try and drive new patients, whether it is- Hard, hard, hard for a marketing director to look like a hero when they don't track every result that they are yielding. Yeah, and, 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 and think about it like this, right? Like when the calendar year comes to an end, you're gonna be in a position where you can say, I can absolutely justify the investment that you put into my marketing program because if you give me $2, I'm gonna give you five back in new patient revenue because I'm yeah. tracking that. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome, it does enable that. Let's talk about deployment real quick. Uh, so Charlie, is there a small way to get started for them to dip their toes in? What do they need to know? Just the marketers involved or you need to get ops and finance involved? This is a big decision-making unit, big buying unit that needs to be involved at cross sections. It sounds like like line doesn't just help marketers, it helps ops people know how to optimize the call center, it's, uh, it's revenue. It's, so talk about a little deployment or the big deployment and then who needs to be involved. Yeah, it's. I was just thinking about piggybacking on Rich's uh, comments there, which were great about ops stuff. So, if your you know your platform's growing and expanding, and obviously having the marketing insights critical, and then your team's going to grow, right? So whether it's a call center or maybe some of the platforms have just different brands that have different teams that are handling these leads, streamlining the process of handling and converting leads is paramount, and you can get a lot of consistency because you have the data. So in terms of implementation. We always work with marketing folks. We always work with ops folks as well. Um, it's light overall. I mean, the process takes about two weeks usually. Uh, we have a kickoff call. We make sure we understand all the different, you know, marketing components that you're leveraging strategy-wise so that we're, uh, you know, hooked up to them so we can measure them. Um, and then there's some custom things like what treatment types do you want to measure and things like that. But no, it's very non-invasive the way that we can get started. And again, usually we can do that within about two weeks, get up and running. And then, you know, you're going to know in the most practices in the first three to four weeks have one or two key insights that they can take action on and already start, you know, delivering, uh, delivering some value. I say one, one thing, and, and Alex, you did ask me, like, what other thing would I convey to our audience? There is mm -hmm. one thing that I will convey, which is, Line is a healthcare specific technology. It is HIPAA compliant. Mm. And that is a huge deal right now. And the fact that the way that Line pushes data back into ad platforms and analytics platforms, it does so as an offline conversion event, which means you don't need to leverage pixel data in order to get conversion actions into these platforms. And with HHS changes, there are healthcare providers out there right now that aren't using pixels anymore. You can still get this information into your ad platforms without using pixels. So if you're in a position where your compliance team has told you to remove pixels from websites or anything like that because of the HHS stuff, you can still get valuable new patient acquisition information both in your own reporting and in your ad platforms and your Google Analytics using this solution in a HIPAA compliant way. So that is another huge advantage for people out there who are in certain situations where maybe they don't have the visibility because of these compliance changes that they once had. Uh, this is a way to get back to that. I love it. Compliance becoming something we talk about every day as marketers with our healthcare clients. So, so strange that it- Gotta be compliant, man, got to. It wasn't like huge, I mean like what, even a year ago, it's like, yeah, Salesforce is HIPAA compliance, fine, but you can use other things in HIPAA compliant ways, like HubSpot, and that was fine. And now like, that shit's not enough. And <laughs> class yeah. action, so it's crazy. Charlie, any parting words about Line? Man, I don't deserve you guys. That was awesome. Uh, no, I mean, if, if anybody's listening and wants to try us out, I mean, we figured out that there was no platform that's specifically made, as Rich mentioned, specifically for healthcare. We didn't think that was fair. There's unique challenges that need to be overcome, and the only way to do it is truly automate things through uh, speech analytics technology. So uh, would love the chance to prove that to anybody who's listening and hit me up. All right. You can find it, and line is spelled with two eyes. Why'd y'all do that? 
So when you're a disruptive tech company, you have to find a common word and misspell it. That's a rite of passage. Uh, and then, you know, we're getting all the lines of communication. And then also the domain was available for not that expensive. That's what, yeah, we were going to be Pinnacle Web Solutions. Oh, there's, there's, a, there's a cardinal right there. All right, let's be cardinal. Yeah, and also the business is worth more when you're your own little name that's not used anywhere else. Totally, man. Like, yeah, so line's going to go big bucks. Invest now invest now charlie won't let me invest all right guys you find it l-i-i-n-e you can find charlie win w-i-n-n uh and if you can't find either of those uh i doubt your intellect but come find me and i'll point you to charlie if you need a little help with the street signs all right charlie rich thanks for joining us on ignite very fun we got to talk shop talk innovation talk tech and i hope our <laughs> listeners enjoyed it thanks guys